Do you have a pile of unfinished projects squished into bins or boxes, pushed down into the deepest depths of your closet because you failed to complete them? I don't. What I do have are a bunch of incomplete projects. For a long time, I thought that meant that I was stupid and pathetic, a failure. But that's not what it meant at all. It simply meant that I was not in the right place for that particular project. Almost a full year ago, I began a project with such zest, such confidence, but I did not complete it. I boxed it up and set it aside. Today I thought I might give that project another go and see if I am in the right place to finish it. This is not pizza. And I did film a lot of the project, so let's take a little trip to yesteryear so you can see what I did, but also so I can review because I don't remember a whole lot about it. Quick, your friends want to go to the Renaissance Fair. Festival. Fair. Your friends want to go to the Renaissance Shindig this weekend. The trouble is, you have nothing to wear, very little time, and even less money, yet you do not want to go as the futuristic character of your group, which means you'd just be wearing your normal everyday clothes. So, what do you do? Visit your local thrift store, of course. I made the whole thing up, I'm not in that situation, but maybe you are. I wanted to challenge myself to see if I could make a dress for a Renaissance for, for, for thing using solely things found at my local thrift store. And I want to keep it under $25. And let's make this even more interesting. I'm going to challenge myself to make it in eight hours. I don't think that's going to happen, but I want to see if it's possible. The first two discoveries, which were two pairs of curtains, were found prior to the introduction and were actually a major part of the idea formulation for this project. I journeyed forth after the intro to hopefully find some additional supplies. I was not disappointed. I found the remaining pieces to my project puzzle in yet another pair of curtains. For the design, I wanted to make something reminiscent of the Tudor period. I know, not original, but is there anything original anymore? This dress in this painting has been on the to create list for a long time. Here is what we have to work with. These are fabulous. The jacket would form the majority of the dress, the gold would be the front skirt and parts of the inner sleeves, and the red I truly scored with the red curtains. I thought I would need to purchase more fabric, but since they were lined with a thin white polyester, it meant that I had something to make the inner inner sleeves. It was cheap and flimsy, but that was okay. What did bother me, though, was they were too white. So I'm going to stain this fabric, but I do not want to use anything new because I would have to add that to the cost of everything. Fortunately, I have something I've been saving up for just such an occasion. This was meant for compost pile. It's leftover tea and coffee. Sorry, compost pile. It's mine now. Disassembling, not dissembling, disassembling all the curtains did take some time, but look at the extra spoils. Hem weights and also padding, which I would later use to make an ironing board cover. Why would I make an ironing board cover? Don't ask. And then I placed the newly harvested two white fabric into the pot. It's because I shrunk my ironing board cover, okay? I shrunk it. Anyway, it looks like I cut out some angled panels here. I think I remember I didn't want to cut out rectangles because this fabric was thick and I didn't want it to get too bulky and break my sewing machine. Look at me just happily going along. And then I saw it. The giant stain in the center of the gold fabric. Oh well, thrifters can't be choosers. Or if I want to be a chooser, I guess I need to look closer and maybe bring my own lighting into the store. It looks like I cut out a couple of rectangles here. And then an angled panel here. I am really uncertain of what my past self was doing and why she would do that, but maybe we'll find out. Now for the sleeves. This is me professionally measuring my arm. For the number of times I've measured it, you would think I would remember, but no. And anyway, it could have grown. Or shrunk. You never know. I cut out a pair of gold, a pair of white, and a pair of red sleeves. With the red and gold sleeves stacked together, I marked four vertical lines in chalk, and then four little perpendicular dashes along each line. Then I sliced through all the sleeves along the vertical lines. I really hope I thought this through, trusting the process past self. I am trusting your process. Okay, I am marking in chalk again. I am duplicating those dashes on the other gold piece and also the red pieces. to do is sew 
the pieces back together to recreate the sleeve. However, I am going to leave these four inch spaces that I cut open. And then we're gonna have these little openings on all four pieces. Next, it was time to sew up the white sleeves. I think the stain turned out rather nice. A subtle difference, but no longer a brilliant white. I stitched the side seams up and finished the edge with a zigzag stitch because I do remember this fabric frayed horribly, just like my nerves. For the sleeve hems, I did a fold and double fold down and stitched them into place. Measuring up from that newly finished edge, about two-ish inches, I marked a line in chalk for a casing made of bias tape. True to the challenge, both the bias tape and elastic were ascertained from the thrift store. I made a nice little channel for the elastic and sent it through with a safety pin because this was before my beautiful bodkin came to me. And I believe that's as far as I got, so now it's time for a little unboxing. Let's unbox this thing. Ooh. Okay. I did not film the sewing up of the sleeves, but it looks, it looks like I got pretty far on them. Okay, let's just keep pulling stuff out. What is this? Okay, I did not finish. I did one sleeve, looks like. Excellent, okay. So I sewed the pieces back together on this one, sewed the pieces back together on this one, but I did not put them together yet. I put the second sleeve together by pressing the seams nice and flat and then sandwiched them together painstakingly matching the seams. My goal was to make it look pretty cool without having to add a bunch of ribbons and trim, and it didn't work out great. I felt like it was a lot more work than it was worth, so I wouldn't suggest this method. I figured out the outer sleeves by drawing a basic sketch of the shapes, cut some testers out of an old bedsheet, and came up with a pattern that I was fairly happy with, and then cut two sleeves out of the jacquard. And of course, two sleeves out of the red for lining. The upper part of the sleeves were a lot easier to figure out, and I just cut two out of the jacquard. I didn't feel like I needed lining for that. I'm going to be using these days, which I made for my gothic snow white costume, I don't know how many years ago. Time is weird. Frustrating thing is I cannot find the pattern for it anywhere. The fortunate thing is that I actually traced around it and repatterned it because I wanted to recreate the stays, so bully for me. Tackling the cutting out of the bodice was a little more challenging than I had expected because the threads of the jacquard were all messed up. They were pulled together in weird ways causing unpleasant bunching, and I'm not sure if that was the way that they were before or after I washed it because the other panel didn't look like that, but the second panel did, so I have no idea if they came that way or what, but I was able to cut around the problem areas. I also cut the bodice pieces out of the red fabric for lining and one more time out of this stiff and sturdy fabric for interlining. Here are the pieces for the bodice. You have the front on the fold, side front, side back, back, and that's the back panel. Good morning. It is indeed the next day. Last night I got the bodice pieces all sewn together, lining as well pinned up the sleeves, so I need to sew the sleeves today. I need to sew up the skirt pieces and attach sleeves to bodice. There are a lot of steps. I'm really having a hard time understanding my thought process behind trying to make this a quick project. Even when I unboxed it, I, I thought I could finish it. It was barely begun. There were still pieces to be cut out. There were still so many things to figure. I'm just not great at estimating time frames, or maybe I'm incredibly delusional, or maybe I just don't want to think about all the steps. Otherwise I'll get overwhelmed and I won't do it. It might be a combination of them, but I have realized lately because of recent happenings that I am very, very bad at time estimation. I find time very confusing. It doesn't seem to make sense to me. However, if you hand me two things that are supposed to weigh the same, I can tell if it's off by even a few ounces. I can look at something and guesstimate the inches pretty close. But when we start to talk about time... We're sorry, the number you have reached is not in service. Yeah, 
So <laughs> that's something I've learned about myself recently and uh, not sure what to do with that information. So I've got a lot to do still on this. I'm just gonna, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I think I'm just gonna start doing steps like sewing up the sleeve, sewing up the skirt. Yeah, I'm not gonna think too much about it. That's the plan. That plan actually ended up working pretty well. I tackled my not so favorite part, which was the middle sleeve. It was too long, so I chopped it off and then used the chopped off bit to make some little cuffs. I sewed the giant sleeves together individually, joined them together at the edge, and flipped them right side out to make two beautifully lined sleeves. And then just topped it off with the upper sleeve so it could go over my shoulder. I really wasn't ready for the ridiculous feelings experienced at trying on these sleeves. I'm not a very demonstrative person, and I do not like to exaggerate, but yes, I think it may be accurate to say I am obsessed. It was then time to put the sleeves together turducken style. Did you know that's a thing? That's a real thing. I thought that was made up until quite recently. Anyway, I took the first sleeve, stuffed inside of it the second sleeve, and then stuffed the third sleeve inside of the second sleeve, so both third sleeve and second sleeve were inside of the first sleeve. Leia's love. Sewed them all into the armhole, checked to make sure I could still get it on, even with the extra poof and bulk, and I could. There are just a couple more things that I need for the project. My local thrift store actually has a fair size craft section, which is awesome, but whenever I can't find what I'm hoping for, I go over to the secret craft section extension, i.e. the jewelry section, and that's where I found my pearls. All right, I am back. It is not a different day. I just didn't like my outfit or how I did my hair, so changed it. I'm going to shift gears just a little bit and work on the skirt. Addressing the skirt. Upon reflection, I realized that the front didn't need to be cut on the fold because I was going to have the faux underskirt peeking out, so I sliced that down the center and then sewed the skirt panels together, created a waistband, and then remembered that I actually need to get the skirt on, so I need to have a center back seam, so I split the back down the center as well. I inserted the gold panel into the center front, then I gathered up the whole skirt into the waistband and was feeling kind of sad that I cut out angled pieces instead of rectangles because I didn't really have as much gather as I wanted, but hey, I was really nervous about breaking my sewing machine, and if my sewing machine breaks, I am in trouble. So I'm sitting here doing some hand stitching on the skirt and I have the skirt spread over my lap and I am so hot and sweaty and very uncomfortable and I'm just wondering why on earth I chose to make this kind of dress while it's still summer. I just seem to keep doing things that lead me to the question, why am I like this? And you know what we do when we're getting a bit too deep and philosophical. We go for a walk and get so grumpy because of all the wonderful sunshine, and we forget all about our existential crisis. When I came back inside, I gave the skirt a try on, and while I don't think it's as gathered and puffy as I would like, paired with this top, it's kind of a look. Something that I have never found at the thrift store is boning, or even zip ties, so I had to get really creative with this one. The only thing I could find that would remotely imitate boning was this plastic embroidery mesh, which is actually pretty weak, so I had to double layer them, and then sliding them through the channels was near impossible, so I opted for another method, and that was sewing them into the bodice. This is taking a very, very long time. Would I recommend this as a substitute for boning? No, no I would not. I am in the unfortunate situation of being tied to a challenge, that I set for myself, yes, but I did want to try my best to stick to it, which was thrifted items only. This is what I've got. And it's not great. I think if I had thought it through a little bit more, thrifted items only would have been so much easier with a completely different project. I think there's a lot, a lot of stuff I did not think through at the beginning of this, so here we are. I am really contemplating setting this aside again for a little bit because I'm getting a little bit overwhelmed. It's actually a very big project and I definitely made it a lot more difficult by setting the only thrifted challenge. But you know, I am very, very good at making things more difficult for myself. 
not to brag or anything. I'm really good at it. Finally, finishing the boning disaster on the bodice, I cut some straps out of the jacket and the lining and attached them. Then I was able to attach the sleeves. And I sewed the lining to the bodice along the top edge and the bottom edge, pulling the sleeves through it all to turn it right side out was quite a feat and I felt rather proud of myself for accomplishing. The next step was to hand stitch the lining at the armholes. I decided I am going to take a break from this project again just for a little bit. I'm not going to pack it away though. I've got a lot of hand stitching to do on it so I'll probably do that here and there as I am able but I'm not going to try to complete it and film a reveal just yet because very soon in the next couple of days there's going to be a heat advisory. It's going to get pretty hot. 103 degrees Fahrenheit, about 39 degrees Celsius, I think. Filming a reveal outdoors in that dress, probably not the wisest thing. If I were to film a reveal in that dress outdoors, I would probably perish. And I don't really think any dress or video is quite worth that. So I am gonna take a little break, work on something maybe a little bit more sensible for the current weather. So that's the plan. Fortunately for you, you don't have to wait. For me, it will be a couple of weeks most likely for you, but a second. So I'll see you in a second. I was gearing up to insert the eyelets into the bodice and I was thinking, how are these little eyelets going to be able to punch through such thick fabric? And then I remembered I didn't get the eyelets at the thrift store. I can't use these. But what I did find at the thrift store was some embroidery floss. So it was time to hand stitch some eyelets. I got this bag at the thrift store for a dollar. I selected the color I thought would be the best, then realized after the first eyelet, I had a few more eyelets to go. There was only one of this color in the bag, so I was going to have to mix in some other colors so that some of the eyelets weren't completely different colors. So I just ended up mixing in a few strands of darker brown, and it worked pretty well. So I hand-stitched some eyelets while I played Tug of War. How's that for multitasking? Such a cute moment. Well, it all went downhill from there. That's right, I and my family got hit hard by the plague that must not be named. In that first day, it was near impossible to get anything done at all. Home remedies included lots of ginger to keep the nausea at bay, and of course, sleeping in the bathtub. By the second day, I was able to do a little bit of hand stitching and knocked out a few more eyelets, which felt really good, and I slowly finished all 14 of them. And I didn't even stab myself with the needle once. Okay, I, that's not true. I did stab myself with the needle, but not the eye of the needle, which is incredibly likely when you're pushing a needle through such thick fabric without a thimble small victories. Exhausted but determined to finish this project, I set to work on the French hood. I was still feeling pretty crappy and during this process I also received some pretty bad news so please do forgive me for not going into great detail on how I made the hood. I used the rest of the plastic mesh gluing pieces together to make it sturdier with yes glue from the thrift store and then used the remaining pieces of red and gold to cover the plastic and then for decoration I used that pearl necklace. I stitched and glued things together. And then I used some cotton cord in lieu of ribbons because that's what I found at the thrift store, this beautiful cotton cord, which doesn't really match the color scheme, but that's what I had. And I also used it for lacing the bodice. So there it is. I really thought it was finished and I completely forgot that it needs a veil. I don't have any fabric that will work for that. Usually it's black and it should be very drapey chiffon would probably be the best. I don't have anything like that and I do not want to drag this out and try to find something. So I'm going to use this. It's not ideal at all. It's lining that I found at the thrift store and I've used some of it and I'm actually not going to sew this in or glue it in because I want to take it out and replace it with something better. But for today, this is going to work and I'm probably just going to pin it in. And hopefully that looks decent-ish.
There's no heat advisory, but it is still incredibly hot in this thing. I am so glad, so, so glad it is finished. I will say that my perfectionism was really hurting during this project, not being able to do things the correct way, not being able to do things the way I wanted to was difficult. I love a challenge, but this was very challenging. I will most likely never be doing a thrifted only challenge again concerning period costumes. When I first started this channel, I was a little bit sad about how practical I had become and I wanted to try to be a little more impractical, a little more silly, have a little more fun. I think I may have taken that a little bit too far, trying to be a little bit more impractical. I took it all the way past impractical to delusional. So I need to back it up a bit. It's totally fine to scrap a project if you feel that it is not worthwhile. If you feel that it is not worth your time and effort, then it is completely fine to scrap it, to get rid of it, because your time and your energy are worth so much. And it's also completely fine to set it aside for a while and come back to it later. I'm really glad I was able to do that. I'm really glad I was able to accomplish this. I can't remember the exact total it all came to. I'm gonna go back through and try to calculate it as close as I can. I am proud of myself for sticking to the challenge Everything that I used was from the thrift store, except for thread. I don't know, I'm pretty impressed about that, but eh, no big. <laughs>